Yo, what it do, man? This is Grind Face and a therapist, man. I'm Demetrius, and this is Sunia. We've been together for 28 years, married for 23 or 22, but who's counting? On this episode nine, man, we're going to talk about business, man, and purpose. Purpose and business. It may not come up with the title yet, but we're going to figure that out on the way. So, um, as you know, me and Sunia both got our own businesses, legally, basically. Um, so Why take did you it away. throw in legally? Because people feel like you're an entrepreneur, you got to be doing some crummy, um, criminal shit, you know? Before, be like back in the day, to say you was an entrepreneur, people always be like, oh, you must be a drug dealer. You know what I'm saying? So now it's a I new wave. That. It's a new wave now that it's being cool to be an entrepreneur. But see, a lot of people don't understand the point of, of building a business and a hustle. It's two different things. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. A hustle is basically, I'm going to milk the money out of it. And not worry about what's going to do next year. And the business is like you, you, you trying to build for years to come. I think the difference between a hustle and a business is just what you said. A hustle is a person is going to move from one hustle. Well, there's two different types of hustlers. A go getter could be a hustler, like grind face on your grind. That's a hustler, right? You always hustling to make the moves to make. No, nah, I want to say hustling. I'm not hustling because you, you know what I'm saying. What is that? Hustling people take it because even. Because I mean, I first started grinding and hustle. Grind and hustle, it got like a bad stigma to it. That people feel Depends like. Depends on who's saying. People it. feel like, oh, you out here hustling? Oh, that means you out here doing some illegal activities and stuff. But I could never complete a thought. Because you take too long to go around it. Because you were trying to say, I was, basically, no, I'm hustling. I'm that's not, not hustling. what I was you're saying. Gonna, I wasn't you know even talking saying? about you. But, but <laughs> so I, ahead, I can't, I can't you, complete you, a uh, thought. We, we could rewind is, it. But you were so saying, crazy that you do this. Because if we talk in real life, sometimes you don't even say anything. If like if we, well, I guess it depends on the conversation. But you, you swear I cut you off, but it's evident who cuts who off. I wasn't even going. What I'm saying, hustling could be a good thing. Like if somebody depends on who's using the term, hustling could be like, oh, this person is grinding. Like they're really out there hustling. I get what you're saying. It does have a negative connotation to it, but it could also have a positive message behind it too, depending on what context you're using in it. But anyways, going back to what I was saying. What I was saying with a hustling, a hustler is going for net one hustle to the next. This year I'm doing this. Next year I'm doing this. Then I'm doing this. Then I'm doing this. I think when you're building a business or building an empire, you're staying building brick by brick by like an Amazon, like a Apple, like a Steve Jobs, like a, they stuck with it year yes, yes. after year after year after year. They didn't pivot like, no, no, Today you, could, is grind you, could, face. you could pivot, but you it's still under that same umbrella. No, no, no. When I say pivot, I'm saying to a whole different type of business. Yes, yes. It's 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 a I difference. would say that's pivot though. That's just switched it all up on you. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say that. Because we do pivot. Because and I pivot. You know yeah, what I'm saying? We, when you you gotta always go back to the drawing board and business. And I would tell people this all the time. Business class, I know people that have degrees in business and and, and they offer degrees in business, but a degree school does not teach you business. Application being in a business teaches you business because this is what happens in business. You have a business, you start a business, you think it's going to flow, then there's a barrier, there's an obstacle. That obstacle comes up. Then you got to put out that fire, you have to find a solution. A few months go by, another obstacle comes up. These are things that when you're in class, it's not going to teach you because in reality, in business, you don't know what obstacle is going to come up. And so building a business and being consistent is key because over time, you'll have a Google, you'll have an Amazon, you'll have a TikTok, you'll have a grind face. You know what I mean? You'll have sustainable businesses that are multi-million, billion dollar companies versus going from hustle to hustle to hustle. But it depends on who you are and what you're try trying to build. Some people just in it for right now. Yes. Make their coins, get it for right now. And then you have some people that are longevity that are in it for the long run is trying to basically build a legacy. Agree. Yes. Some people are probably thinking like, well, who is y'all to speak on business? Um, and a lot of who am is, I to speak on business? Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm talking about the viewers out there. You know, you, you don't got the haters. But because this is people, the thing. Hold on, because even people feel like, because I got this a lot. I'm not really a legit business because I don't have a building. A brick and mortar. But yet, that means what they call... Um, 
That's my, just smart on for, overhead. For, yeah, my overhead is zero and my profits is way high. And I don't think you don't should be saying it. that all on here. You know what I'm saying? They so it's like people that. people really feel like because you don't have a business, an address, a location, you ain't really a business. You know what I'm saying? That's dumb. With everything that's going on online you're now. You're not professional. Even if you're not I think if you don't have a website, you're not professional. But to say you don't have a... um a walk-in building. I don't, I mean, it depends on what you do. Some things you need a building. Like I need a building, obviously. Right. Hold on. Hold on. I got to tell this story real quick. I had took some pictures um, a while back at this event. So everybody's like, Oh my God, who took your pictures? They are such beautiful. They look professional. <laughs> I said, um, why I'm, um, why I'm not professional because you know what I'm saying? The, the, my, my skill of my work doesn't take away from, me having a location and me promoting I'm a photographer everywhere take, doesn't take away from my skills, but people look at it like, oh, you're not professional because everything about me is not f- photographs. You know what I'm saying? So people kind of downsize you when they feel like you ain't got a business, a building. Well, I think that's just ignorance, you know, and at the end of the day, what you think of me doesn't matter about my business skill set because the proof is in the pudding. It's in the it's in the numbers. But anyways, going back, I got to I got to backtrack real quick, though. You always backtrack. No, I got to backtrack because I don't think we made something clear when we said hustling, because somebody listening to this can say, well, that is entrepreneur. They're setting up business. I have multiple businesses where you set up one have another business. I'm saying hustling. I'm not talking about somebody that has a standing building. Don't have no passion business. in it. No, they have a business and then they started another and all these, I'm saying they start a business, they quit that business, start another business, quit that business, start another. I'm not talking about people that have multiple businesses and in, in starting up new businesses. Making Your business is making money and you started something else. That's right. what you're saying. Right. So that's not what I'm referring to. I'm talking about people that legitimately just, they're in it for the hustle for the moment. I believe in a successful business, and this is just my belief, you have to have a passion in it. Because this is the thing. If you don't have any a passion in what you're doing, it's not going to last long. It's going to feel like work. It's, yeah. Opinion. It's going to feel like work, and it's not going to it's not gonna be long term because you're not going to want to do it. I could just speak for myself. What I do, I do it. I would do it anyways. I've done it before I had a business. And I think that's why it was long lasting. My first business, I served, LLC. It didn't last because I had no passion in it. It was a hustle for me. It was for me to generate income. And I and I try to work it and work it and work it. And then I was like, forget it. And I said, forget it because it wasn't something that I genuinely cared about. Now, everything that I'm doing now, it, I'm going to keep doing it because I genuinely care about it. Like my books ain't been a number one seller, but that hasn't stopped me from writing books. Because I genuinely care about it. You know, the mental health business, I genuinely care about it. So when you pick a business, when you want to start a business, I always think you should start from a place of passion. Because that is what's going to determine longevity. But what if I don't know my passion? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, damn, how do I figure out my passion? It's a question. Oh, I didn't know if it was rhetorical or whatever. I don't use rhetorical. Rhetorical? No, so... Passion. Um, it's something you enjoy doing without getting paid. I, no. I would say it falls in that guideline. You know what I'm saying? Well, you said what is how a person know what their passion is. I think a person knows like, okay, I never knew that I knew my purpose. And many times, just like what you just said, what, oh, the, the pictures look professional, but you did them. So they was basically minimizing it because it was you, yes, right? Yes, yes. Many times we already have our passions. Like I was a writer from the time I was, what, fifth grade. We had to do a haiku uh, poem. Fell in love with poetry. I always say poetry was my first love. Was writing screenplays. Remember high school? Writing screenplays. Wanted to make movies. Wrote a book in the eighth grade. I just remember the long ass letters you wrote me. I used to write you poems. (laughs) But I was always a writer, needless to say. So the passion was always there. I was always a go-to person. People always came to me for advice. I was always the leader within my group of friends, always. But I didn't know that was a gift. I didn't know that was something I could utilize to monetize because for me, it came so easy. I didn't see it as something that was 
of importance. So many times people ask the question, what is my passion? You already have your passion. You already are walking in your passion. You're already pretty much walking in your purpose. I don't think you just connected the dots. Yeah, once you connect them dots, it's over. It's, the game is over. So when, that's just the, the, the game is over. When dots. God showed me my life, my purpose in life was to provoke thought, to change the behaviors of people, I wake up with a, with a, with a plan every day. And that's the thing, too. I think when you know your purpose, you wake up intentional. You wake up with something to do. When you don't know your purpose in life, it's like driving with no map. You don't know where you're going, so you end up anywhere. When you have a purpose and you know your purpose, you're intentional. And I will say that for me, when I begin to know my purpose, everything from that day forward, everything was intentional. And she, y'all, she know her purpose. And as for me, I, I really still don't know my purpose. I'm still trying to connect them dots. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's... I think everybody's journey is different. So we, I'm not saying it's easy to find your purpose. Yes, because at the end of the day, I'm still trying to find my purpose. It's um, it's hard, but I I do agree with with her because if you once you find it, it will blossom. I've been on go you know ever since. So I, I'm a witness to her blossom of her purpose, and now I'm just still trying to find my purpose and what I'm I'm supposed to be doing so I can monetize it off. You know what I'm saying? you're doing it right now i don't i uh, you've always been I a don't leader know. yeah mm-hmm. I'm a, but at the end of the day like my whole business my brand i enjoy like branding and marketing and stuff like that but like i don't think that's my purpose i don't know but i like to pour into people i like to share information but what you're I still doing don't, now i still don't know my purpose so this is the thing too self-doubt always kicks in just like i said i never knew my purpose because the things that came so easy to me I didn't think they were of importance because I'm because it was easy for me. I just assumed everybody could do it. Then I'm looking at it too because, and that's what he's doing right now. I'm looking at it is like if because I'll take it because if it wasn't social media, internet, then my purpose be gone. You know what I'm saying? So that's why. So I what are we doing right of, now? Of what is exactly my purpose? You know what I'm saying? Because if you take a certain element out, you be lost. You know what I'm saying? I say you say you say your purpose is truck trucking and driving. I don't think that's a purpose. I think that's a job. But you enjoy driving, so now you build a business behind because you enjoy driving. But that's but what not if a purpose. Driving, that's a job. That's a, a role. Okay, well, explain the purpose because I'm you, lost you, too. You, you didn't hear did what I just said. I said my purpose. Not your purpose. Explain a purpose. I'm gonna tie it to my <laughs> purpose, and I'm gonna explain the purpose. When I just said my purpose in life is to provoke thought. To change the minds of people. So uh, I don't need pro- the, pro- provoke thought is your purpose. That's to right. basically to get you to think, to make you then think about your behavior to change it, right? Okay. You've always been a leader. You're very knowledgeable. People, this is the thing about him. Sometimes people don't take him serious because he plays so much. And then when you see him on I social enjoy media, the laugh. I, I he's enjoy always, laughter. which is always is cool he's always been humorous over stuff that I'd be like, okay, that ain't even funny. But he's always been a jokester ever since I met him to the point where sometimes I used to think he used to play too much. So that is his personality. But if you get with him on a one-on-one conversation or really get into a conversation with him, very knowledgeable and very deep. Very knowledgeable about relationships, about marriage, about business, about a lot of different things. Always been a leader Always, it would be crazy to me because people would always follow him. Like grind face. People get, I mean, think about it. Who could start up a company and have people getting tattoos of grind face? He has that type of influence over people that is like unheard of. Like you think I'm about to go get somebody's company logo tattooed on me, but that's just how he's always been like that. He's been an influencer since we were kids. People would just do stuff because he was doing it. That's a purpose within itself. But then you have to understand if God has given me this platform to be able to allow people to follow me, what am I supposed to be feeding them? I know I'm not supposed to be feeding them anything negative or bad. I know whatever I'm supposed to be feeding them is to elevate them and make them grow. And I think that's why I started the podcast of this, of they could get some insight information. 
But I, I can't say it's my purpose, though. That's what I'm saying. That purpose, I don't know. I just see some, something so much bigger. I just, of, but I guess but it, purpose me, is simple. me delivering information could be my purpose. Listen, if I provoke thought to people in my house, I'm fulfilling my purpose. When I go out my house and do it to the clients, that's extra. I'm fulfilling my purpose. When I go to these schools for mental health assemblies, I'm fulfilling my purpose. When I write a book and somebody reads it and their mind has changed, I'm fulfilling my purpose. If I meet somebody at the grocery store and I provoke thought to make them think about their behavior, I'm walking in purpose. We keep thinking purpose is this big. I think that's what's the problem. Yeah, we, we're overthinking it because there's people that are going to be local. There's people that are going to be global. But everybody's purpose is not the same. If I touch one person and I got them to change their behavior based on me provoking thought, I did my job. So when we talk about purpose, you're making it this grant because you're already in purpose. When somebody I'm telling you can go and tattoo your business logo, what do you, you have influence. So, but that's what I'm saying. What am I supposed to be sharing? That's where I'm. You on the at. podcast what right am, now? What what, what are you? What are you supposed to be pouring into people? I don't know. I know. I years ago, saying. you I'm told me you low. wanted to do uh, marriage conferences, which I think you give great advice. I don't know about the blended family stuff. You know what I mean? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you need mm. to be healed from that mm. before you give anybody some advice on blended families. But um. In terms of you're already walking in it, you're you're overthinking in it. Can it be, you know, sculpted and um, what is the word polish, I'm looking for? Polish, polish some more. Absolutely. My purpose could be polished Everybody some more. Everybody could be polished every day. Exactly. So start with even so this people, podcast. Stop overthinking it and just tap into something I guess you do daily without you even knowing. You know what I'm saying? And that, that might be people the call key. him all day on social media. Asking for his number for information. They he's the information guy. What do you mean? You're a resource. Well, I guess that's it. I'm a resource. Let me get that on my shirt. I'm a resource. Oh my <laughs> Daddy, I'm a resource. You know what I'm saying? But at the end, so I'm just trying to let that be clear to y'all. It, it's not easy to find your purpose. You know what I'm saying? Some easy. people could find I it and they, they could blossom, and some people we still struggle with it. You know what I'm saying? So you just got to tap in and really, I guess, some people meditate, some people pray, some people smoke a blunt and just find that inner thing that you enjoy doing. We're you know not smoking saying? blunts to find the inner, like, <laughs> stop. No, some no. people do. I mean, whatever connects you within you, whatever connects you to you. First you know what of saying? all, and, whatever and connects you, it ain't. You know what I'm saying? And, they and, probably going to get tired of me with the spiritual stuff, but I don't care. Because it's okay. not about connecting with you. It's about connecting with God. Because no. you don't give yourself purpose. God does. Well, well, I can't talk from, and that's why I can't tap in my purpose because I ain't asked God yet. Shit. Well, maybe you need to. Hey, ask God for me. No, and send that you, shit that's, me. And, and you know what? That That's that's true too. So let me, let me tell y'all the journey of me basically tapping into my purpose. So this dude, he was doing graphics at the time. We had a company, Highly Held Productions. And, and see, and this is a what, hustle for me. So this is. This is what people know. You had graphic D-Miles designs. But all my graphic work was hustle. So okay. But Highly Held Productions was kind of going into the, the way of grind face. We just didn't know it. It was kind of the same situation. This is the thing, though. Going back to people don't want to listen. This, these businesses are not our first businesses. So let's just say that. We've had multiple businesses and failed in business and not even failed. Understood what it takes in business. And what I've learned in business, again, without no passion, there's no longevity. Now, going back to what I was originally saying, he was a graphic designer. He was thriving, doing all this stuff. I was a stay-at-home mom. Now, mind you, I was always a writer. I didn't know I was a speaker yet. I thought I found out I was a speaker like in my 20s. We had to do a, um, a group project. And... All my classmates was like, hey, you speak. You're the best speaker. And I thought they was gassing me up because they didn't want to speak. It was a communications class. Like, nah. You know, they're like, nah, you're, you speak better than everybody in the group. And I spoke, killed it. We got, out of 100, we got 110. 
Then all the, the members at church had to teach a Bible study. Taught a Bible study, killed it. And I was shocked and surprised, like, whoa, you know what I mean? And that's when I start tapping into, like, I could speak. Like, I always knew I was a writer. That was, like, I knew. I knew. always knew I wanted to be a CEO. Um, I never wanted to work for someone because I was always a leader. Leaders, like, you're going to attract what you are. And if you don't understand the dynamic in our relationship, we were both leaders growing up is why we are so connected in many ways. We have so many similarities and some that are different. Um, but I remember looking at him. And it's crazy how even in marriage, how the journeys can be so different, how you could start at the same time, but be in two different places in your marriage. And so he's thriving and he's doing, you know, graphics and I'm still trying to figure out I'm stay at home mom. She talking about thriving. I was hustling. (laughs) But in my eyes, remember, just like the last podcast, everybody can be in the same experience and have different perspectives. In my mind, I'm looking at his talents and blown away like this dude is good, not even realizing that I have talents, overlooking my talents, but looking at him and like, whoa, you know what I'm saying? And feeling empty and not knowing who I am because I'm watching him in my mind thriving with his talents. And so I remember like trying to get jobs and like getting frustrated because I couldn't get jobs. But do you remember this? When I told you... And I was praying and I could never get a job. And I told, what I tell you? I'm trying to get the remembering part. What God told me. I don't know. Oh, just take rest because you're going to be working your God ass off. God told yeah. me. He didn't say it like that. But, <laughs> and I told him, I said, God told me that I need to rest when I was looking for a job because it's going to be a coming time when I, I don't have time to rest. And when I say that came to first, that's crazy. But anyways. I remember praying and crying out because I went and enrolled back into school to get my bachelor's and I was crying and I was asking God, like, what am I, what did you create me to do? Cause this is how I felt. He would be at work. We got this company, highly held productions. We have D mile design. She's doing designing. I'm trying to be an asset and I really seeing how I fit into the picture of his company um, of our company. So he put me a spiritual advisor. Cause you know, what else would I do? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that goes back to our other episode titles. She needed a title. So I, mean, no, <laughs> I didn't ask for a title. I don't know yeah, why the, he did that spiritual advisor. <laughs> <laughs> so for oh, me, shit. I'm lost. Right. And, and I'm really, you know, at home and, and I thank God for having the opportunity to be at home with my kids. But back then it was just like, I felt like I didn't have a purpose. Like, all I am is just a mom and, and, a, and a wife, like stay at home. Like, what is that? And so I was really hard on myself and I really began to feel like I didn't have any meaning. And I remember praying and enrolling in the school the night before Saturday night and rolling back into a bachelor's program. Saturday, I mean, Sunday morning, we I go to church. We're in this leadership class and it's talking about purpose. So after that praise and worship, I'm like literally crying like, God, like, what is my purpose? Like, this is like, I'm numb to this. Like, I love being a wife. I love being a mom. But what did you create me specifically to do? And I remember just crying, crying, crying. After praise and worship, I went to the bathroom to wash my face. And this woman, her name was Minister Lynn. She came in the bathroom. And she started ministering to me. Now, mind you, I hadn't told anybody anything I was praying about, what I was consulting with God about, not even him. And she comes and she tells me, she said, uh, now, mind you, I, my undergrad is in um, criminal justice. I actually wanted to be a lawyer. And then I pivoted because when I got into my bachelor's program the night before I enrolled, I kept thinking, am I supposed to go into law school or am I supposed to basically be a counselor? Because I didn't even put the connect the therapist terminology yet but peep this she comes in the bathroom and she says god is telling me that you're supposed to go back to school because i was feeling guilty like did i just enroll in school without consulting god she said you're supposed to enroll back in school she said i I don't see you stopping at your bachelor's i see you getting your master's i see this 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 and this and she said i see you being a, a counselor now mind you therapist wasn't even on my radar at this point didn't even really understand the concept of therapy or what it even was. And when she told me that, I was like, okay, cool. 
So when I finished my bachelor's, then I went to get my master's, so forth. And basically to say that that moment when she told me and confirmed everything that God has already shown me the night before, I started pursuing purpose like never before. And I hadn't stopped since then. That was 2010. Okay, guys, I'm sorry for that. She'd like to take the long way. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? So basically, that was a long story. Yeah, you you stretched that one out. I was, I was like, just telling the story. You was getting paid for the minutes or something like. Yeah, keep it going. I can't even be great. Like, can I just share without being ridiculed? And this, man, on a time I, restraint. I, I had three thoughts in my mind, but I, I forgot. You should have wrote them down. It was like, dang, is she gonna cut it off? And just when I was about to say, look, I'm like, telling us. Listen, listen. Because you, but you be giving you no pauses, and, and, and so it's like, because do I jump in now? Then I have. It's to, like okay. you take a deep breath. I have to think y'all really don't understand the the mind of a writer. Like seriously, like when I tell you I can have five, 10 different thoughts and points going in my head all at once. And then trying to figure out which one do I grab to elaborate. And that's what I'm saying. Like my mind, my, my typing and my mouth cannot keep up with so you, how many thoughts go through my mind so and ideas. you're basically telling the people the, order, the fastest way to tap into your purpose is to tap into God. Where's the coin? Oh, right there. There you go. But what if people ain't tapped into God? I mean, that seemed like a, like a you know what I'm saying? That seemed like a, um, what they call that? Um, but what is it to profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? Because at the end of the day, once you leave here, everything is is boils and is all about God. That's like so, God holding a, a, a corn, a little candy, like, come on, come on. If you want your purpose, you got to come to me. That's what you're saying. No, that's not what I'm saying. Because he give, he's not a he's not a puppet master. He gives you the he gives you the option of choice. But you still could. But but basically, okay, let you me still this. could find your purpose without let me, going let through me the route this. through God. Let though, me, right. Let me say that's this. What we, that's what we really want to know. Let me say this. Gifts are without repentance, meaning a person can have their gifts without even ever um, asking. Then there goes your them, answers, y'all. Right? Yes, you could. Because you're already walking in your gifting without realizing. You are born with your gifts. You, a person that's an entrepreneur didn't wake up one day and just say, hey, I want to be an entrepreneur. I was, I was ready in something. It was something said, I was already in there. You can't learn to be an entrepreneur. You it can't. Be in you. You, you know can't. And I agree. That hustle and that determination got to be in you. Certain things are just in you. Yes. Certain things you, you could, okay, like a therapist. I tell people all the time, you have book, tech, textbook therapists that went to school and they know textbook. Then you have real seasoned therapists that can walk it with their eyes closed because you cannot teach a person certain skill sets. You can't teach a person to have compassion. I can't teach you that. It's something that has to already be in you. So there's certain things in life no, you, you could teach. A you person, cannot teach a person to have compassion. How can I teach you to have compassion? By Close them. your eyes. Listen. Cry. Don't react. Be empathetic. Don't be so angry. Nah, yes. you, you cannot teach people to have compassion. That's something that's a feeling and an emotion that you already have to have. You cannot teach a therapist to have compassion for a client. That's why when I hear therapists and they be like, when I worked at the jail and they would make comments like, "Oh, they're." They're um, criminals. And I'm like, but you a therapist, though. You have no, like, zero compassion for these people? I think that You can't into, teach that. Well, I guess it would be a compassion because that falls into that, that bias of even racist, you know what I'm saying, way they feel like. It's your heart. Yeah. I can't teach your heart to, 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 to be compassionate. I can't teach your heart that. So basically tap into what's, what you went to and, and monetize it, I guess. Huh? Yeah, I mean, that would be the best business. So you don't feel like you're working. It's doing something like that you're passionate best, about. But you could have other businesses that's profitable. You know what I'm saying? But you will you will feel, I guess, you will feel that work because you don't enjoy doing it. I don't think you, I don't, okay, I just think it depends on the person. But look at Steve Jobs. He wasn't a, a computer guy. He got the next and, and best no, person. No, that was, but listen, people always say like, but he doesn't know computers. But the, the Steve Jobs gifting, he was a visionary. 
of so, ideas. Hey, so, hey, hey, the same. That he took was me a back, visionary. That took me back to the dude with McDonald's. That McDonald's. A um, visionary. Yeah, they they made good burgers, but, but that he dude was that came a in, visionary. Yes, exactly. He was a visionary. I'm a visionary. I could see stuff before you. Be like, why are you thinking oh, so? Yeah. I, I didn't know it was going to roll back to you gassing yourself up. Oh my god, she, she's a vision. She is a visionary. She likes to dream a lot. I give her that. I dream or I do. It start visionary. It starts no, with dreaming. No, because let's put it in context. Right? I see it and I execute. But you do fact or we, fiction. We was younger. You dreamed a lot. Shit. Let's not just, fact or fiction. Do I execute? I don't know. I don't see no damn chef in here. Oh my goodness! You such so you a, a dreamer? Capper. Shit. You ain't a dreamer. Everything I that I see no chef in here. Oh my god! But you visualize it since you was a kid, right? We're not done yet, though. Exactly. But that's but, what I'm but saying. Listen, it, it's, but listen, in business, everything do I execute? Yes, you execute. You see, man. you, you, yes, you, you, execute. you, you a hater. <laughs> like, I can't stand a hater to somebody don't, <laughs> oh, you gassing yourself up. No, in, in reality, and not even on no arrogance. And stop saying that because you're going to be making people think that. What I'm saying is I've always been a visionary. Always. The visionary to listen, me is the same thing as a dreamer. No, it's not. Listen, because a visionary can see things in a business and execute it and monetize in ways that a person don't even comprehend. Because even when I would be telling you stuff, you'd be like, oh, that don't make sense. And then now to see it, it's That's like, the same oh. thing to dream, a dreamer, Sinead. No, a dreamer just dreams. A dreamer that it takes action, but it's the same thing. Visionary to dreamer is the same thing to me. Okay. But but don't 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 downplay it. But basically what I'm saying is years ago if you can't see it in your mind, then you know way that you could accomplish it. For example, that's the same thing. No, a but it's different. When I say Steve Jobs, it's different. For example, somebody can tell me, Oh, I like cars. I can make a whole business plan and a game plan to monetize cars. It's a visionary where you could take and just be thinking, oh, I want an iPod, something that ain't even been heard of yet. That's a visionary where you could see things before the world even understands what it could be. So we're going to agree to disagree because that's a dreamer also. No, a dreamer's a dreamer. They don't execute. No. Say who? Let's look at I like I like uh, definitions. Dreamer, I like definitions. That, that depends on the person. No, you it be, depends on the you definition. You could be a, also be a visionary and don't get shit done. You know what I'm saying? But you, 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 could talk, you could talk the game. It's the same thing. Visionary dreamers, it's the same thing. Okay, he's right. Exactly. So a thank visionary you. Get a coin. <laughs> Shit, thank you. is a person thinking about or planning the future with imagination or wisdom. Planning. A visionary. There we go. Relating to or able to see visions in a dream or trance or as a supernatural. So he, 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 he's, he's, how, he's right. Y'all see right. how that he's argument right. was about to start and she was wrong? He was right. I need an apology. A visionary yeah, is someone yeah. with a strong vision of the future. Thank you. Man, I love to be right. <laughs> Even if I was wrong, I was still going to hold on tight Okay, to so he, yeah, he, he was right. But because most people think dreamers are people that don't execute. And visionaries, to, that's me, a, to me, that's a wishful thinker. Oh, yeah, that's okay. You know okay. what I'm saying? That that's a nigga wishful thinking. Like, nigga, shut up. You wishful thinking. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, man, I wish some but, money would fall out the sky. Get out of here with it. But... Demetrius is also a visionary. Mm, um, I don't know. You know things ahead of time. You be you be talking about in my lane, yeah. as of like you know what I'm saying. In my lane, what I know, but like outside my lane, I don't know. I don't think so. Because I would say a visionary, he could jump in multiple areas because he 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 got that that imagination in his head that he could scope up something of. Boom and bring it all together. Mm-hmm. Me, true. I'm. I could say I could get all the information I know in my yeah, like, field yeah, that's and put it in something together. But when you start talking other fields, I'm like, eh, I'm about to go back over here. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that, you can't. I can't take that coin to visionary. Sorry. Okay, so we do the ha ha. Yeah, right. we get you get dun, the ha ha. No, you get it. You get the ha ha. Yeah, she's trying to. No, she's trying to gas me up and say I'm, I'm not trying to gas him up. Like no, no, in all no, reality, like my I, husband. I know is what very, I know, and I stay talented. away from what I don't know. He's very, you know very, very talented in so many ways. So um, back so basically, this show was about business purpose. How could people tap in their purpose? 
I think people monetize, already know their purpose. And I, and, and, make it into a business. And, but but then that goes back. Okay. That goes back. Because we keep saying business and monetize. So I just want to say this real quick. We said everybody is not, an entrepreneur is not in them, right? But then this day and time, everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. They want to monetize everything. Some things are just not for you, and that's okay. You got to know what's for you. Your position. Not even your position. So everybody ain't meant to be the boss. Everybody's not meant to be the boss. Everybody, You have to know what is best for you. Because we're talking about business, and so people just, well, I guess that was the conversation. But in terms of purpose, your purpose may not ever be um, no, be about. On, yeah. Yes. So you got to tap into what is for you. Yes. Thank you. Because um, you just take it even like. Like we take it to basketball so y'all can relate. Everybody's not Michael Jordan. You might be a Scottie Pimpin. You know what I'm saying? A BJ. I don't Armstrong. even want to. No, 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 no. You no, might be a great. So but no, it's not. Because sometimes you could be a great wingman. No, you could assist that's so the person. I think to everybody's the top level. Michael Jordans. And, and, and oh, there listen, you go. Then everybody no. get a participation trophy too. No, like, come no. on now. Everybody let's, do let's get real. a participation come trophy on. in life. Everybody's Everybody is Jordan. a Michael Jordan, no, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because society, society says. If you do this, you're you're bigger than this. But the CEO and the janitor are one and the same. No, you're, listen, taking, you're taking it listen, to a whole different level. Listen, I'm, you're taking it to a. I'm I don't, saying some. People, I get what you're saying. Some people is great as the wingman. They, they help the person. You know what I'm saying? You taking it as I'm. But everybody's you. not a wingman, is what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying. So there's no difference between the person that takes out the trash and the person that runs the company. Because both are needed. And that's the problem with people don't understand. Yes, it's no different as a human. But nigga, them job titles is a difference. Oh I'm CEO, goodness. you the janitor. No. It's a difference. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day. No, it's as a, a human, difference. I still entreat you as a man. Listen. You still, you listen, know what I'm saying? I don't listen. treat you like you beneath me, but listen, it's different levels in this game. You it's know what I'm saying? You got to know your position. It's not levels. I may be the world best babysitter in the world. And I may be the Michael Jordan of babysitters in the world. I'm no less than a business owner. I'm not greater that. than a bit. So, and that's what I'm saying. So if we all have a chore in this house, right? And, I, and I'm going to say this and I'm going to go back to this. Listen to this analogy. When your parents lead a house when you was a kid, if you was a kid with chores, say you got three siblings. You had the kitchen. Somebody had to take out the trash. Somebody had to clean the. the you you're talking listen, this stuff that listen, it doesn't relate to this. It does. This is the households and kids. Listen, listen to what I'm saying. Somebody got to do the living room. Someone got to clean the bathroom. When your parents came back, they don't care who did what. Exactly. Y'all all kids, but the parents is the king of the goddamn castle. Y'all ain't on the same playing listen, field as the parents. Listen, can I finish what <laughs> like, I'm saying? Come on now. Can I Shit. finish what I'm saying? Your parents only care about the assignment that you completed when they get back. In this world, we all have different positions. We all have different things that our purpose you're going entails. You're going Listen, to quick level. cut me off. You're quick going cut. To left field. I don't care. Listen, when God comes back, He's not going to look at you had the company, you had to take out the trash, you had. The only thing He's going to care about. Is if you handle and completed his assignment. Okay, you talking it. about God. We talking about shit, some other shit. No, it's the so same thing. No, we on, we on it's two the different same levels. Thing. No, it's, we just agree saying. to disagree. Two, so agree look, to disagree. Look, y'all, let's say you a famous hip hop artist. Oh you God. the you the talent. So now you got the security, you got the other people that's basically they play their role as a unit to help the team grow, but they not the talent. That's what I'm saying. No, you're not beneath that man. Okay. You still you still a man. He still treats you like a man, but your position is different. Your you position is different, but it's no greater, no less. And that's what I'm saying. It's no greater as a man. It's no so greater stop less. Saying but your position, everybody can your position be the is Michael different. Jordans because you may be the Michael Jordan in your field, but in you, your lane. You saying Michael Jordan. That's is what you great. said. I said everybody's not Michael Jordan, meaning this is the main act. You got to be the wing guy that also to help perform the main act become great. Yes, you you a great man or whatever. In the Everybody's era. great. You might be a great wing man, but you're not Michael Jordan. But just play your position and be great at your position. That's I just don't saying. like the whole. Everybody the, the, can't be Michael Jordan. And that's today's problem. Everybody wanted to be the superstar, but instead of helping, 
and okay, play your position. You like basically, if you play your position and be superstar in your position, the whole team could be super. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. So we nobody wants be to be the Jordan. janitor. Like basically, so nobody wants to be the janitor. But if you are the janitor, be that great ass damn janitor. Okay, so be they could be Michael the Michael Jordan, Jordan of janitor. that janitor. That's my that's point. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So you took that's it to a whole I'm other saying. left field, like shit. That's all I'm saying. Whatever you at, be the great at what you do. Stop trying to go for the other guy's job, and then you not even good at his job, but you was a great ass janitor. That's what I'm saying. And but, that's my point. I think we're saying the same thing, just in different ways. Yeah, you took the long route. You no, know what I, I'm but saying? I went from a spiritual route because I'm serious about that. Like everybody, just know what you're supposed to do and be great and, at it. And That's be great all. at it. You I think many times in society makes you think, "Oh, you got to be I'm an beneath. influencer. Yes. You got to be this. You got to be that." No, yes. do what is best and be great for at you. with you. If you a, a stay at home mom, be a great ass stay at home mom. mom. I mean, shit, this is where you talent at. So who's to say that you're not? Shit, you're a great stay and, I, and, and that's my point. And there isn't anything wrong with it. But you got to know what your purpose is. And that stay-at-home mom, that may be your job to basically pour mold into them the, kids. Mold these kids into to be the next whoever what? Somebody great. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because we all know without a, a strong how coming from a strong household, you ain't shit. So I ain't gonna say that. I mean, I'm gonna say, <laughs> yeah, retract that, please. Um, I'm gonna just say, you know, you you want a sturdy and healthy foundation in the home, but just if but you don't I'm have saying, that, I'm saying everybody plays an important part. Don't ever think that the where you at in life is not important. That's all I'm saying. It's like, and and society would make you feel like, oh, what you do is not important. But hell, if if you the janitor at this company and you stop doing your job. The company is going to start smelling like shit. You know what I'm saying? Because who's cleaning up? So everybody plays an important part in in everything what you do. You just got to own it. You everybody know what I'm plays an you important do. part. Plays an important part in life. Period. And that's why I say everybody's a Michael Jordan. Because you you if, look. Look, I wish you stopped saying that though. Everybody's not a Michael Jordan. Yeah, yeah. You, you're the best who. You're the best version of yourself. Yes, let's say that. You, you're the you best say, version of yourself. Because when you say, like, everybody's a Michael Jordan, that means everybody get a participation trophy. Everybody You do. showed up, you play. Everybody's, everybody's playing winner. the game of life. Everybody's, everybody's playing the game of life. And I think society, society, and you're falling into that group of society, no, I makes think, people feel like they're bigger hold than on, hold the on, next person. Let's not, let's, because that's part of society also with that. Everybody get a participation thing because now you tr you you're not teaching these kids how to be losers. S some of y'all is losers and they gotta own that <laughs> shit. You know what I'm saying? Oh and my no, goodness. because this is true. When you always teaching a kid that oh you, you did your best, you no. Sometimes you, listen, you gotta learn how to take a loss because if you learn how to take a loss, you would come back stronger. Listen, that's how I feel. If you a loser, there are some people that's losing because they're they're choosing not to play the game of life. However. If you wake up and decide to be the best version of yourself, you Michael Jordan every day in my book because you're the best version of you. What they got to do with what I just said? I don't know, I but don't I'm know. saying what I'm People, saying. People, if you lost, accept that L and turn around and get a W. You know, that's and, all. And, and wake I think up that builds, and become that the best character. version of yourself. I think losing, because I lost a lot. It builds character and it builds you that drive to keep on going. But if People lie to you, be like, "Oh, you you a winner when you really lost." It's like, like, what do you mean though? If you if you wake up because and be the let's best say you're on a, you on on the baseball team in little league, we not, I'm not talking we, about sports. We, I'm talking about everybody, you, but a you human. Talking about, we, Listen, I'm talking we, about you. So if you wake up and be the best version of you, you a L. No, if you wake up and, and and be your best and you lost something or you 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 didn't win or accomplish something, it's all right. It's all right to take that L. That's what I'm saying. A lot of people. When they they when they fail at something, they get all depressed and all beat up on themselves because they they failed. But it's okay to take that fail. That's what I'm saying. Today's society, they try to teach you like if you fail, you a fucking loser and don't try it again. That's what I'm saying. You still lost because you're looking at me like you lost like hell. <laughs> I'm Basically, just like we're, we're everybody take L's. Everyone it's all right. Does, we, but we talking about two different things, I think, is what the issue is. You always talking about something else. You always go Because my mind, that visionary yeah. mind, it yeah. goes, yeah. So what I'm saying, uh, if if it's okay to fail at something, it's okay to lose at something, just keep on going. That's what I'm saying. So in business, so would you say 
as business. I, let's let go at business. I started Grind Face Apparel back in 2000. Let's go from the first businesses. No, I don't because I can't remember that far back. Basically, I started Grind Face Apparel 2011. I was booming in the streets, um, clothes on all artists, but I wasn't making no money. Does so, that mean it's a fail though? To me, it, it, it was a fail because that was my whole bottom line of me making money. But the so influence. me wasn't making no money. I felt it was a failure, but I was too proud. My ego, like I, I can't quit. I don't. I put too much into this. I don't want to quit and walk away. So that's where I pivot and made Grind Face TV. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't quit. Was I know it? I was failing. I was taking an L, but I, I, I was like, okay, I'm cool with this. I'm not making no money. Whatever I'm making no sales. Was it your ego or was it basically um, going back? No, to my ego, board? my ego kept me from quitting. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want to be. You know what Explain I'm saying? I'm that. not a quitter. You know what I'm saying? My pride wouldn't let me quit. I'm not a quitter. You didn't so, want to be. You didn't want to be um, proven wrong. It's not proven wrong. It's just something in me that's like it's it's hard for me to quit. Like, is it det- that's what I'm saying? Is it ego or is it determination? Is it drive? Well, it's probably drive. I don't know. But like I said, I didn't want to quit. But I so I pivot because I knew I failed. It was failing, you know what I'm saying. But so instead of quitting, I just re-strategized, went back to the drawing board, and see what was society going to. And that's when I seen that everybody want to be seen, and I need. I was being real with myself, like why Are do you somebody? <laughs> You're talking about me real with myself. Okay. Look, she's, trying to distract, she's trying to distract my powerful message because I am a speaker. You know what I'm saying? But like I was saying, I'm losing track. I'm losing track. You were real with yourself. Sinead, you don't mess my whole... I can't even bless the people now because you made me miss my story up. So I was losing. I was failing. But I was real with myself and told myself, like, this is not going to work. And a lot of times people don't want to be real with themselves because then they start digging a deeper hole and now they're getting in depth and everything else because they don't want to be real with themselves. Even going with the artists, you know, you whack. Your, none of your, your, they don't know they whack. They don't know they whack. A lot of your family and people don't want it to be honest with you and be like, dog, you suck. You should try to manage or do something else. Don't be an artist. It's not your lane. But yet, People, this go back of people always telling you a winner. It's okay not to be, this is not me. Let me re-strategize. Okay, I can't rap. So let me try to manage. Let me try to be a promoter. Let me try. It's not quitting. It's called pivoting. Re- restructure your shit. You know what I'm saying? And that's when I seen that. I wasn't making no money. Apparel wasn't my thing. Why do people want to wear grind face? They don't know me. I was being real by myself. And you I were pivot, being real. And I made grind face TV. And now, you know what I'm saying? I'm booming. You booming? I'm booming. You see me on TV, you see me on everything else. I was saying. As I pivot and I was being real with myself that this is this is but what if failure. I told failure. you failure is, is okay. That's what I'm so saying. So if I told you your stuff sucked, you would have been okay with that? What my my um whatever. Because I don't think you would have I think you would have been mad. It's not telling me over being if I was an artist or something. No, just anything. If, if it's it not telling me face, if I was it's like not it sucks. telling me it sucks because sometimes you gotta filter that that it sucks some people be hating, but all the facts was there. I wasn't making no money. It wasn't no profit. I was losing money. So do you think you know as saying? a wife, I should have motivated you or told you? Because I, I, I really don't think if I'd have been like, I don't think you I don't know. I think that. it's how you deliver it. Because if you would have been like, babe, l- looking at the numbers, we negative, we losing money. You would have uh, got frustrated more. The sales I know is not you. coming. You know what I'm saying? You, Demetrius, come on. This is a podcast, but I know you. So I took the approach of continuing to motivate you. It's probably what some family members do because I don't think you would have received it. Who knows? It didn't I know because I know you. You're assuming. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because I knew I wasn't making no sales. Hey, I, I ain't making no sales right now on apparel. But shit, I'm not really pushing and putting money into it either. You know what I'm saying? So you just got to know if it's not working for you, stop pouring into it and just switch it up. Okay. What business tips would you give? Business tips I would give, man, is stick to it. If you really believe in it, even though whatever people say and all that, stick to it. And if you're passionate about it, things going to turn. But if you're not passionate about it, just give it up now. We'll talk. Hold on, but I want to play devil's advocate. Do you feel like people that are not passionate about what they do still thrive? 
Yes. But the thing is, now I got to work. It's it's because uh, I worked my whole life. The thing is, it's it's it feels much better making money on something you enjoy doing than make making money that you don't enjoy doing. That's As, true. And I I I experienced. I made. I was making good money working, but I hated getting up going to work. Every but what morning. if the but what if the money is the enjoyment? Then that's your that's just your story. You enjoy it. It's your money. But if you, you know, I don't know. You ask me a question. I don't know. You got me. You enjoy money. What that mean? <laughs> like shit. Because I'm saying like. When you are passionate about something, it's not work because you love doing it anyway. And the money is just the extra bonus. But then there are people that are doing things that are not their passion and they're thriving. And like you said, even you chasing though they're money? thriving. Huh? If by chasing money? They're chasing money. By chasing money, going to lead you down the wrong path. Why? Because it, it will... By chasing money, it's going to lead you to wrong decisions making. And I've been there, done that. Because everything is about money. And everything is about money. So you kind of like, you start making bad decisions. And that can lead you down a dark road. And that's not a good move. You know what I'm saying? And then once you get the money, it still doesn't provide that that peace within yourself. I think when you're doing anything and money, money driven, it's, it's a bad thing. Because then you're doing anything to get the money. And then you start, you know, losing integrity behind the money. And then, oh, you know, I'll lie about this for the money. And it just, it just keeps yes, snowballing. Yes. Yeah, you keep chasing, so, you're chasing the money. But when yes. you're chasing your passion, it's, it's completely different than doing it for the money. Like, even sometimes clients come, I let them get service for free. It's a passion. Now, obviously, it's a business. I can't let everybody get services for free because I'll be out of business. But when you're passionate about something, you'll do it no matter what. With money, you're only going to do so much yeah, as how far money. as the money goes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So if there ain't no money in the picture, you ain't seeing me around. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's the, that's, that's bad. That's bad. That's because, bad business. Because even with business, it's not, it's, it's, let me see. I'm tongue tied. In, in business, it's not about money. It's about building relationships with people. Currency. You know what I'm saying? And that's way more important than making a few dollars off this connection. You know what I'm saying? Being a middleman. But if you build relations with people, I think that's the key element in business. And that's a good tip I'm going to give y'all right there. I'm going to give you a coin. It's building relationships. And sometimes I did that without, um, I did services and stuff like, you know what I'm saying? I'm just going to build a relationship with this person. It's not It's not about the money. I don't need your money because it's, it's not about the money. Let's build. And it turns out into something great. You know what I'm saying? You know what I also think a business tip I would give? is basically just having fun. Like these mental health assemblies are like so fun. You know, therapy, I'm I'm like in a candy store. It's like having fun. Like even right now we having this conversation, people may think it sucks, people may like it, whatever, it doesn't matter to me because I'm just having a conversation and enjoying you, right? Laughing, joking, yes, really having a good time with you. And that's why we 28 years in and you got a baby daddy drama. What? Oh, go ahead. (laughs) Anyways. So what I'm saying is even the views, like that's not my focus because I don't even look at, I don't even know how we look at the views or look at the, the, views at the, end of the day but what I'm saying is when you're, when you're busy having fun, not only does time pass, but I think there's a different gratification. Like I always say, when you do what you love, the money's just the extra. Cause I'm going to do this anyways. Like even the conversations I have on with talk with Sydney, these is conversations my I have with my friends and people all the time. This is like our normal conversation. Now we're just putting on a podcast. And so when you're doing what you love, I just feel like money is just the extra because I'm going to do yes. this anyways. Yes. And you don't, and you don't know where, what's your seed going to blossom into. You know what I'm saying? Cause even planting these seeds right now is just enjoying and just having fun with each other. And that's what I'm saying. So As passion a, and a purpose. Married couple just enjoying activity together. You just look at it like that. Who knows what come what comes out of it? You and that's know. what I'm saying. I think when you do things like, oh, let's do this podcast for the views and the money, we're already doing it with the wrong intentions. intentions. But if I'm doing it and I'm just having a good time because this is what I'm do I love to do. And another thing I'm gonna say too, I feel like when you're doing stuff with intentions, I mean, when you're doing stuff with um motive. With the wrong motive, I feel like it's forced. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like if if this wasn't something that I just liked doing. I would feel like it was forced and I wouldn't really want to do it. It feel like a job. Yeah. You know it's like saying? a task. Like, like I, I really do don't want to. Exactly. Yes. And this is why I say it's always big in business to, to do what you're passionate about. Because again, 
It's not work. So that's your tip? Is do Yeah, chase your passion. Don't chase money, chase your passion. And if you don't know what your passion is, figure it out. Because your passion is going to, your passion is going to yeah. grow with you. Get it out, baby. I'm thinking of the Get word. Be quiet. <laughs> your passion is, no, seriously, though, if you think about it, like. No, I agree. It's I in agree. you. It's not something you got to think about. It's not something you got to learn. It's not, you don't have to learn how to be you. And that's your passion. Like, your passion is a part of you. I don't have to go to school for that. I mean, of course, if you like a therapist, a lawyer, a doctor, and you need a state license, but nobody can teach you how to be you with your passion. You're just finding your passion. But it's also okay to chase your, chase a, a, have a business just for your um, monetary business, make money. But like I said, it, but if it it's not feel, a patent, no, it will feel like work. But it's and, work. and I know, and that's what I'm okay, so because it's I've seen people that are therapists. I want a private practice, and, and I'd be like, okay. Go get it. Cause they, they, they look at me and they like, it's easy. And then they get into it like, Oh so, yeah, it's not as easy as you think because you are just looking at the because money, but work. you're okay. You may be a phenomenal therapist, but not have any business sense. It's too, it's night and day. You get well, what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. You got to know what work. your path. See, running a business is not work for me. Negotiating, getting conscious. Like that's not, that's not work for me. I could do that with my eyes closed. And that's what I'm saying. You got to know what you are passionate about. Yes. Which, damn, you cut me off. And then let me. Because you keep cutting me off, but because, I'll let you go. The floor is all yours. <laughs> because it's two types of lane. It's two lanes. You got the passion lane and you just got the money lane, which is okay to be in a money lane, but it's going to feel like work. When you're in the passion lane, it doesn't feel like work. You enjoying it. You enjoying everything. You know what I'm saying? So, so it's, let me ask it's you this. two lanes, but it's two different feelings. You know what I'm saying? And that's let me say which the ones do you think is gonna cause stress, longevity of life? Your passion or money? The the money is chasing the money because that's gonna cause because it's a job, is it is going and for me for working majority of my life, uh, it's working, forced to work for the money, and it, it, it's 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 stressful. I ain't gonna lie. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's having the passion and enjoying what you're doing and just getting paid as just a bonus is much more easier, stress-free. You know what I'm saying? She got quiet because she's all in her emails again. It's an important email, but go ahead. I already said what I said. You wasn't listening? No. Can you say it again? No. But uh, that's about purpose and business. It's two different lanes in it. You could thrive oh, in I heard either. What you, said. you could thrive in either lane choose your lane but it comes with i don't even gonna say i guess it comes with the cons oh, i mean eh. it comes with the cost yeah it's come with the cost so you know what I'm i mean yeah i guess you could do either or you could do either or but you just i would say my business tip is pursue your passion that's that's we're gonna wrap that up on that pursue your passion i'm finished and, and i hope y'all this gave you a little more um enlightenment on how to find your passion if you still lost your purpose purpose passion wouldn't, wouldn't that be the same thing yeah okay then so if you still lost you might have to google it or um yeah. oh my bad seek god because god will give you the straight direction to your purpose and your passion but if you don't want to go that way out yeah you might still be searching like me until next time y'all can find us on all social medias. I'm Grindface. You can find her where? Everything, Cindy and Maya. And we're going to um, wrap this episode up. Go ahead. You, you do the outro. We're going to start letting you do the outro since I do the intro. Give us an outro so we can um, close out. Until next time, as I always say, continue to break cycles. Peace.